from perverse thoughts. Deliver us, Abba, that we will truly be the people that you have called us to be beyond Yasharel, that we will be Yasharun, that we will be the ideal people that you called us to be, that we will truly represent your image and your likeness. Ah, but we not only fail, but we fail miserably. We need you to help change us. We need your Ruach not to just be upon us, but to dwell within us. Cause our actions to reflect your nature. Cause us to be more like you, Abba. Your word says that we are in the world, but not of the world. But yet we seem to have worldly intentions, a worldly mindset. Change us, Abba. As we come into your presence, renew us, revive us, restore us. Create us a clean heart, Abba. Not our clean, but your clean. Abba, cause us to trust in you more than we do our intellect, more than we do our imagination. Abba, reveal your heart to us. That we won't just hear your word. We won't just receive your word. But we will live out your word. That we will trust in your word. That we will cling to your word. We cannot change without you. We cannot do it alone. Show us to have a heart after you. Show us how to thirst for you. Abba, increase our, our hunger for you and for righteousness. Show us how to seek ye first the kingdom. We are blind and lost without you. Abba, we confess our sins before you today. Asking you for forgiveness. Abba, let us leave this place different from which we came in. Remove from us a self-righteous attitude. Reveal to us that we haven't even scratched the surface of what it looks to be righteous. Abba, I pray that we will truly cry out to you. For we know that the outside is a mere reflection of what's happening on the inside. And no matter 
how clean we think we are. We are still yet filthy. So we ask you to cleanse us. Purify us. Try us. Prove us. Show us. And then heal us, Abba. We cannot do this by ourselves. We don't even know where to begin. But we say, Toda, Toda Abba, for your compassion never fails. That's what make you righteous. That's what make you just. Because you give everyone an opportunity to repent. You give everyone an opportunity to come into your presence. You give everyone an opportunity to lay at your feet. So Abba, we look to do just that. Immerse us in your presence that we will come out with a different nature. That we won't look like what we've been through. We won't look like what we're going through. We'll only see ourselves how you see us. And that is after you have had your way with us. So we ask you to have your way. Have your way, Abba. We invite your Ruach into this place. We invite your Ruach into our hearts. We welcome you, Abba. Abba, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, and all of our deeds and actions reflect that of one who is full of gratitude. You saved us from death. You saved us from wickedness. You saved us from destruction. Let our worship in your presence reflect just how grateful we are. You kept our children safe. You mended failed marriages. You saved us from self-destruction. I pray that the chains fall off today. The chains of ego 
and vanity and lust and deception. and filthiness, perverseness. Show us how to be more like you, Abba. Give us divine insight of what it really means to please you. but change each and every one of our hearts. To Helene 48. Great is Yahuwah and greatly to be praised in the city of our Elohim even unto his holy mountain, Mount Zion, lying northward, is beautiful in elevation. It is the joy of the whole earth in the city of the great king. Elohim is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. You break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of Yahuwah Sevuot, in the city of our Elohim. Elohim will establish it forever. Selah. We have thought of your loving kindness O Elohim, in the midst of your temple, according to your name, O Yahuwah, so is your praise unto the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Yehuda be glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this Elohim is our Elohim forever and ever he will be our guide even unto death Psalm 100 make a joyful noise unto Yahuwah all ye lands serve Yahuwah with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that Yahuwah and he is Elohim it is he that made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him in Barak his name. For Yahuwah is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Shalom, Yashirah. 
I said, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharal. Once we recognize that the Shabbat is unlike any other day, I think we'll begin to give it the due that is just. Hallelujah. Glory. We just thank you, Abba, for your, for your mercies and your compassions that fail not. What an awesome privilege to serve a God, serve an Elohim who afforded you brand new mercies this morning. I mean, mercies that wasn't available to you yesterday. But when you arose this morning, you had brand new mercies available to you. That's enough to praise the Most High right there. Because of his mercies, we're not consumed. Hallelujah. And I know I've done some things to deserve consumption, but because of his mercies, I am not consumed. And I say, Total Rabbi Abba Yahuwah for your mercy on this Shabbat. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Yasharal. The Shabbat established in creation and entrusted to Yasharal. Hallelujah. Said, speak to the children of Yasharal saying truly you shall guard my Shabbat hallelujah are we guarding this Shabbat on today are we keeping this Shabbat on today did we show up to the appointed place where Yah said meet him because he was already here hallelujah oh I wish I could get somebody to grasp a hold to the fact that the Shabbat is not like any other day. Yeah, I'm still on it because I need y'all to get this. The Shabbat is something to be reverenced. He blessed it. He sanctified it. And it's for us. Hallelujah. So we just glorify you. I just want to read a scripture to encourage somebody besides me that need to hear this familiar passage Yahshua chapter 1 it says now after the death of Moshe the servant of Yahuwah it came to pass that Yahuwah spoke on the El Yahusha the son of Nun Moshe's minister saying Moshe my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this yard and you and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Yashara. Every place that your soul or your foot shall tread upon, I have given you. Have I given unto you as I said unto Moshe? Then he gives the parameters. He said, from the wilderness in the Lebanon, even to the great river, Parath and all the land of Chittim, and unto the great sea toward the going down to the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moshe, I will be with you. Yahuwah said, As I was with Moshe, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall you divide and inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may guard to do according to all the Torah which Moshe my servant commanded you. Turn not from the right of it. Turn not to the left. That you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8. This sefer of the Torah shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. That you may guard to do according to all that is written therein. For then, after meditating on this Torah day and night, observing to do all that's written in it, then you shall make your way prosperous, and 
then you have, should have good success. Not just success, good success. And then verse 9, he says, Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For Yahuwah Eloheka is with you whatsoever you go. Hallelujah. Our success is predicated on the fact that Yahuwah is with us. Is Yahuwah with somebody in this place today? Our success, us prospering, is all predicated upon the presence of the Most High Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Observing the doom according to all that is written in this Torah. Turning not from the left and not to the right. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Yashorel. Shabbat shalom, hallelujah. Ezekiel has said that we have brought 
his name to look foolish before the nations. So what are we doing today for your name's sake? For his name's sake. What are we doing that brings glory back to his name? What brings back his majesty to the spoken ability to say Yahuwah? For the rest of this week, we start out small and then we take bigger steps. Let's try it out this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all know this song. Y'all know this song. Righteousness and justice leads us into war. Israel is his arrow. Judah is that bow. Judah is his bow. Prepare us for battle. Again. Every through everything we're doing is for his name. So Israel being his arrow and Judah being his bow, it's for his name say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Righteousness and justice leads us into war. Israel is an arrow. Judah is his bow. Righteousness and justice leads us into war. Israel is an arrow, and Judah is his bow. Prepare us for battle. The war has begun. Prepare us for battle. Oh, 
singing that with us. Y'all got some words? Righteousness and justice leads us into war. Israel is an arrow, and Judah is his bow. Righteousness and justice leads us into war. Israel is an arrow, and Judah is his bow. Prepare us for battle. The war has begun. Prepare us for battle. The victory we won. Prepare us for battle. The war has begun. Prepare us for battle. Already, already won, and we already won, and we already won. 
<laughs> Craig know that. It's a big fight. And we have already won. Hallelujah. Can we just release a great sound of praise for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High, y'all. That no matter what's coming up against us, it's, we already won. We already have the advantage. Hallelujah. We already have the advantage. He already gave it to us for his name's sake. Hallelujah. I think y'all know this one too. I think y'all know this one too. This is a little party song, so y'all gonna have to dance a little bit. <laughs> sound, sound, sound. All right. Y'all gonna still clap though. But you gotta clap because we don't got no uh, uh, no drums. Even you got the tambourine back there. So I need y'all uh -huh, to clap. I hear it. Shimmy, shimmy. Come on. All right. All right, so let just, me make sure we got this tempo together. In case y'all don't got the words, I'm going to head and get it to you. Though. So, son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes, right? And I need y'all to actually face each other. Because this is a, a song y'all sing to each other. I think I, I, I shared that. I seen it in a dream that there was uh, a street. One side was singing, the other side was singing to each other. And then it exploded into this big party. So, y'all, let's bring that dream to pass. Let's get this clap going. And he know it, yeah. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Y'all got the yes part. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Nothing is impossible for I. Yeah, y'all remember. Nothing is impossible for I. Nothing is impossible for I. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Yeah. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Yes. Nothing is. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for I am. Nothing is impossible for I am. Yeah. Nothing is impossible for I am. We, we will live again. We will live again. We will live again. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Son of man, can these dry bones live? Y'all sound convinced today. Son of man, can these dry bones live? Son of man, can these dry bones live? Nothing is. Nothing is impossible for I am. Yeah. Nothing is impossible for I am. Are y'all sure? Nothing is impossible for I am. One more time. Nothing is. Nothing is impossible for I am. We, we. We will 
the dry bones coming back together. Can y'all see it? Y'all, nothing is. Nothing is impossible for I I need y'all to know that. Nothing is impossible for I Nothing get back up again. Nothing is impossible for ya. Not from antiquity, y'all. We've never seen another nation come back strong. We've never seen a nation come back strong with economics, with a culture. We've never seen that. Nothing is impossible for I am. I am. Nothing is impossible for I am. So what? We will live again. We will live again. We will live again. And we will live again. That should be like really sweet to your ears. As a people who have been dragged into every nation and learned everything that other nations have done, stripped of your own culture, your own language, your own names, your Elohim, stripped from everything that made you a nation. But that's a promise from the Most High. That the moment that we seek Him, the moment that we turn right back to him, Ooh, just as quick as those curses came upon us, the blessings shall overtake us. One last time. We will live again. We will live again. We will live again.
and give him some praise. Come on and give him some praise. For his promises are yea and amen. Come on and give him some praise. Come on and keep giving him praise. Come on and keep giving him praise. Make sure you make your praise believable to him. Because there's going to come a time that this song won't be a song. It will be reality for us. Hallelujah.
Is there anybody that becomes amazed when you think about all you've done? Do I have any thankful people in the house? Can you lift your hands? I know you've been here all night, but can you worship him now? Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for every way you've made. Thank you for every door you've opened. Thank you for every time you've healed me. Thank you for every time you've delivered. Thank you for every time you've restored. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for providing for me. Thank you for reconciling me with my family. Can I get any honest people that know that God did something you couldn't do for yourself? Thank you, Vanita. So real quick, uh, we'll be here until 3. 3, there's someone else coming in. We'll go ahead and uh, want to jump right into it. I never really got praise dance. Like, like why people praise dance. But I, I just got it. Um, when you listen to the words and her thoughts and actions have to like line up and be in sync with word. And I think that's what Abba wants from us. That our thoughts, our words, and our actions need to all be in sync. So that's just my screensaver. I don't want nobody to think that's vanity. Not at all. Um, I got a couple announcements real quick, and then I want to jump right into uh, what I think Abba placed on my heart. Um, the first thing is we want to send our condolences to uh, Emma Cynthia Lyons, um, whom our elder James Edwin Lyons know as Malachi James Lyons made his transition um, I believe last Sunday for those that know he was uh, battling health issues and uh, he made his transition um, I talked to Emma Lyons and um, she said they made uh, a vow to each other seven years ago that they wouldn't do a, an official funeral um, but he is being buried uh, this upcoming fourth day or Wednesday in which she asked me to attend along with uh, a couple people from Chosen Seed, um, which was their, their home assembly. 
So we want to continue to keep her uh, in our prayers. Uh, in regards to that, she's doing uh, fairly well. But again, we want to definitely keep her in our prayers, as well as uh, Ima Anita. Uh, Ima Anita had an incident um, this this past week in school that uh, it turned out that go, it's going to be something great to come out of it. And um, hopefully even more we'll be able to assist a family that's in need that had not that incident happened, uh, we would never have known about the need uh, for that family. So as we've been trying to, uh, to put word into action every month, maybe we'll have that uh, endeavor and all of our uh, actions go towards that family who's in need. So if you could, we can uh, talk about it after after service regarding it. So the power of words. What are you really saying and doing? When Vanita was up here, again, I thought the thoughts that's going through her mind, her dance motions, and those words had to all be in sync. A lot of what we say, I'm not for sure we, we really know the extent of our words. Um, the most I was dealing with me with this for like the last week. And this isn't some big old blown out message. This is just straight cut to what the word says. But I do want to break down a couple different words, uh, such as the word say and word, so we can really see what it means and, and really grasp the effect of um, of what we say. And hopefully, because what we say typically is what's going on in here. And really what should be going on here is the word. If we really go be set apart in, in the Kodeshim, then every action, every thought, every word should mimic that. All right. This is what Proverbs 18 and 20 says. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. And the scripture tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It's kind of self-explanatory. But the Most High is saying, the words that we say have the ability to give life or death. Now, we was made in his image. But are we reflecting his image? Are we? couple things. My son, attend to what? My words. Incline your ear into what? My sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Guard them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Do we really take in Abba's word when we outside of service? When we hanging around our friends? Are we really watching the words that we speak? During this last week, I probably did the least talking that I ever done because scripture always talk about one that says a lot is a fool. Just being honest. And not only that, it helped me to watch my actions more. At Great Awakening Detroit, we, we're doing this little campaign, if you will, 
that for the month of January, there's 31 chapters of Proverbs. We want to go through the entire Proverbs that entire month of January. We're not starting because it's a new year and all this other craziness. It just so happened to be 31 days, 31 chapters. And what I did at work was one day, I listened to it for about four or five times straight. And the wisdom that Proverbs has, it should not only have us thinking, not just thought provoking, but action provoking. As I try to lead, attempt to lead Great Awakening to Detroit, my only objective is that everybody in here grows spiritually, individually, not together as a church or as an assembly, but individually. Because every one of us got to meet Abba for ourselves. Every one of us will be judged according to our thoughts, our own actions, our own words. My only job is to help assist you in your own growth. And part of that is being accountable to one another. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, 37, 17 to 18. The continents is a sign of changing in the heart. Four manner of things appear. Good and evil, life and death. But the tongue rules over them continually. Meshle, or Proverbs 18, 6 through 8. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows or strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction. His lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly. This hit home. In the multitude of words, there lacks not sin. But he that refrains his lips is wise. And then Proverbs 12 and 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. Scripture says... The transgression of his lips. So before we even do anything, it's first transgression with our lips. This is Matthew, Brick Hadashah 12, 36 through 37. But I say unto you, every idle word that man shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Now this is way beyond Lashan Harar. This is way beyond an evil tongue. This is can be your casual conversation that you're having. They said, every idle word that we speak, we're going to have to give judgment for. We have to give an account for. Proverbs 13, 2 through 3. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that guards his mouth guards his life. Scripture, give us the blueprint. We just don't go by it. He that guards his mouth guards his life. But he that opens his, 
opens wide his lips shall have destruction. We literally are participating in our own destruction, and we don't even know it. We just thought it was something cool to say. We just thought we was being hip. We thought we was being funny. We thought we was joking. We thought we was just playing around. Let's continue. Proverbs 21, 23. Whosoever guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. And then everyone knows Psalm 19 and 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So know that your thoughts, not only just your words and your actions, but even your thoughts are in Abba's sight. Let's continue. A fool's mouth. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of, his, of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischief, mischievous madness. A fool also is full of words. Do you ever find yourself talking too much? And you know you're just blabbling for no reason? A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what it should be or what should be after him. Who can tell him? The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. Now remember he said that my people perish for a lack of knowledge, but he equated knowledge to Torah. So the tongue of the wise uses Torah aright, but the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. The heart of him that has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. You ever have yourself having a conversation that after you have the conversation, you wonder why you even engaged in that conversation? Or maybe even initiated that conversation. Maybe it was the thoughts and the intent of your heart. Now I get why you said that Joshua was was commanded never to let the Torah depart from his mouth. Because if I'm not speaking the word, I may be speaking my own words. Proverbs 26 and 7, the legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. Ecclesiastic is 20, 6 through 7. Some man holds his tongue because he does not have an answer. Some keep silent, knowing his time. A wise man will hold his tongue until he see opportunity. But a babbler and a fool will regard no time.
A wise sentence shall be rejected when it comes out of the mouth of a fool. If we wonder why we can't get through to our family and to our loved ones, maybe because they see a fool and not wisdom. It said, for he will not speak it in due season. Proverbs 23 and 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. So I'm going to go right into it. So Amar. Amar means to say. If you look in the, the creation account, it said, and Yah 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 saw. The more we say, the more we go see what we say. But are we seeing what Yah saw, or are we seeing foolishness around us? The word amar, listen to what it says. It not only means to say, but it means to charge, to command, to determine, to command, to declare, and it means to promise. All out of your mouth. So be careful what you say. Because really what you say is in between your thoughts and your actions. And what you said, you already thought about it first. So now you have way to completing your thoughts. Aleph Mem Resh. Aleph Mem. Aleph Mem Resh. We know it's always words inside the words because it's always the Most High said that it's the glory of Yah to conceal a thing. And then it's the glory of men to search it out, right? And so when you look at that, when you look at that word, it means the bar or at a thing is the word, which means there's words hidden inside the words. So when you look at a mar or saying you have the olive and the mem. Olive and mem together. Olive is strength. Mem is liquids. Water, which means strong water or strong liquids. Which means glue. Which means the words that you say go stick to you. Because you said them. That's the same where you get mother from. The glue of the house, the one who keeps the house together. Y'all remember back in the day they say a man's word is his bond? What, what bond are we thinking about? Promise? Right? Obligation? How about bond and bind are one and the same? Which means a man's words is stuck to him. And we wonder why we're not progressing. Because the words we say, we're trying to be too like, like the world. Fly. Right? Let's be honest. We try to keep up with what, what the world say, what the world do. How are we being set apart? What a person says will stick to him like glue. So when you see the word say, it literally means the glue of a person.
Let me tell you what else it means. You have the Aleph, Mem, Resh. So Aleph and Resh put together is light. So what you should be saying brings forth light of your thoughts. It literally sheds light on what you was thinking in here. Remember that the heart is deceitful and wickedly, you know, desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Well, everybody know it the minute that it leaves here and comes out of here. That's why Proverbs always talk about a fool. It, e- it even goes on to say that when a fool shuts up, he's even considered wise. Because he, he's not letting his thoughts be known. But Aleph and Resh together literally means order. Concretely, it means box. It, a box is something that has structure. What you say should have structure. What you say should have order. If you look at this, it keeps denoting light. What you say should denote light. Your action should denote light. Your thoughts should denote light. If I put Abba's words in here and then all I feel myself or hear myself saying is Abba's word, then eventually I'm going to see Abba's word that's manifested in my life. What was the first thing I was said? Let there be what? Because with light comes order. When light is shed upon something, it should bring forth order. If someone's cheating on their husband and they're caught in the act, it should bring forth or restore order. Even Aaron, or Aaron, his name, look what's within it. Order. Light. Look what the scriptures say about Aaron. Exodus 4, 14 through 15. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moshe. And he said, is not Aaron or Aaron the Levi, your brother? For I know that he can speak well, that he debar debar. And also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. And you shall speak unto him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. Notice that the actions started with the word. But he said, I can use Aaron. Because Aaron know how to speak well. He have his his words in order. Debar. Strong 1697. I'm only using Strong's as as a stepping stone. Right? So it says, a word by implication a matter as spoken of a thing... And verbally, it means a cause. You heard of cause and effect. Saying your words are a cause.
Let's look at the first mention of Debar. Bereshit or Genesis 11, 1 through 6. And the whole world or the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, Debar. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, or Shinar. And they dwell there, and they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, burn them thoroughly, or throughly, and let the brick, and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build up a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto the heavens, and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the, the whole world. And Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And Yahuwah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And nothing, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So he said the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. That's two different things. When he said they was with one language, he said they were, they were talking the same talk. Like they, they all spoke English. Let's just say that, right? Same dialect. But then he said they were with one speech. One cause. Fast forward down to the bottom, it said all that they imagined to do. So they had the same thought too. Now their thoughts became their words, and now their words were becoming their action. And he, even Abba said, what they imagined to do, they go accomplish it. But it was starting the fact that they had one debar. Can you imagine if we were with one debar? Because we say the same words, but we probably we don't have the same debar. We don't have the same thoughts. It's evident. But even Abba said they will accomplish anything they put their mind to. Mashiach said greater works we'll do, and we haven't seen them yet. Greater works we will do, but maybe we're too busy doing us. That we can't do we. So Debar, 1696, it means properly to arrange, to command, to commune, to declare, to destroy, to give, to name, to promise, to pronounce, to rehearse, to say, to speak, to subdue. Midbar, where we think it's numbers. Right? Or wilderness. But you know what you got wilderness? Because we think of the city as peace and the wilderness as chaos when it's the opposite way around. So wilderness literally means order. If you put the mem in front of Debar, you have you have the mem that's chaos. And then you have the bar, which means order. So the wilderness really is where chaos becomes order. Wonder why Abba go send us to the wilderness. Because while we in the city, we taking on the thoughts, the words, 
and the actions of the city. What's set apart about us? Like, really? If we look like everything that the world have to offer, what's set apart about us? If the way we dress look like the way everybody else dress, the way we act looks like the way everybody else act, the way we speak sounds like the way everybody else speak, where are we set apart at? The bar, or where we get uh, dalit bait. Dalit bait literally means slow. I want us to really know that. It means slow. That's where you get bear as slow, which some of us, we don't look at a bear as being slow, but again, a bear being slower than other animals. You have the bab, which is... Um, Literally to murmur, to kind of murmur even when you sleep. We have debash, which is honey, which is something that drips really slow. Right? You have Deborah. Right? Which means the same as a bee. But look what it means. It means to be orderly. It means to move systematically. It means to think first before we really speak. You ever have a conversation? And then you almost have to backpedal because what you said, you thought about it after you said it. It happens. <clears throat> Let me show you what the breakdown of the bar is. The bar means to be slow on being the first to speak. But you know, we always want to get our thoughts out. But it means be the be slow of being the first one to speak. Or it could mean be slow to make speaking a priority. Which means let's get this together so that this will be together, so that this will be together. And all I want to do is have a slow down to see just what we're saying and just what we're doing. James 1, 19, 22. Where, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear Slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know what you hear help prov provoke your thoughts? That's why the scripture talk about watch your gates. Many of us watch that movie. What movie I'm talking about? And what did it do for some of us? Right? Not saying it was a bad movie or anything like that, but notice that the hearing is first because it enters your thoughts, then your thoughts become your speech, and then it talks about being slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of Elohim, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and abundance of wickedness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. 
And grafted means becoming a part of. The engrafted word, which is able to save your souls, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Many times we, we talk about Christians don't get this. We don't either. We don't either. We just say hallelujah more than we ever said hallelujah before. We come to a uh, feast days. We learn a couple Hebrew words. We change our diet and we come to Shabbat and nothing else in our life change. We don't study like we should. We don't say the things we should. We don't act the way we should. That's true. You ever wondered this? We have pairs of certain things. Pair of hands, pair of eyes, pair of ears, pair of lungs, pairs of kidneys. But yet we only have one heart. We got one mind. We got one mouth. I told my daughter this the other day. I said, when you only have one of anything, or you only left with one of anything, you better use it wisely. People can survive with one lung. But you know what? They better use that one they got left very wisely. They can survive with one kidney. Better use it wisely. What about our mouth? Why we don't apply that? And obviously the other cliche is, yeah, I gave you two ears to hear twice as much as you. Maybe so you can observe what not to do. The importance of words. Words actually establishes a covenant. That's how powerful words are. These are the words of the covenant which Yahuwah commanded Moshe to cut with the children of Yasharel in the land of Moab besides the covenant which he cut with them in Horeb. Guard, therefore, the words of this covenant. Abba said guard words. And do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Yermiyahu 11, 1 through 6. The word came to El, El Yermiyahu from Yahuwah saying, Hear ye what? The words of this covenant. Speak unto the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say unto them, thus says Yahuwah, Eloah of Yasharel, Cursed be the man that obeys not the what? The words of the covenant which I command your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. From the iron furnace saying, Obey my words, obey my voice, and do them according to all which I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your Elohim, that I may perform the oath which I did what? Swear or sworn unto your fathers to give them the land, flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, So be it, O Yahuwah. Then Yahuwah said unto me, Proclaim what? All of these words in the city of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem saying, hear ye the words of this covenant and do them, which mean we are susceptible to doing words. So what are you really saying? 
Devarim or Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 11. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or that which uses divination, that practice sorcery or enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Do you know what's the, what brings all those together? What all those have in common? Witchcraft, okay, but what they saying? What they're saying, spellings, spells, spelling. So I went to the, uh, the Hebraic Dictionary. And just keep an eye on the red arrow. These are all the words that I just spoke. Divination, familiar spirits, enchantment, charmer. It says to use enchantment, to use magical songs to mutter. The other one says to hiss or to whisper. When you look at that, it literally means a snake. That noon and... uh. Noon and Shin, but it's talking about the hissing or lisp that people speak with, but it's talking about their speech. The other one, to act covertly, hence, to use hidden art, i.e., magic, to practice sorcery. Soothsayer, who invokes the manes of the dead, by the power of incantations, incantations and magical songs, and then commonly abuse this art of inward speaking for magical purposes. And this one here, used of wizards uttering words to the deluded people. Deluded means to be a fool. The Most High has a lot to say about fools. But notice it's not just what fools say, it's what they hear. Because they become part of what they heard. I've been looking into the uh, etymology or the etymology of words. Is so deep. Even to respond. Look what this says. To promise in return. Re means back. And spine means to pledge. Means when I respond to someone or something, I'm making a pledge in return. Do we really know what we're saying? This is what, this, I'm going to show a video really quick. It's only uh, seven minutes long, seven minutes, 30 seconds. It's actually longer, but I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I only wanted to show what we're saying, and we don't even know what we're saying. And we wonder why the Hebraic language, we try to stress the importance of the Hebraic language. We just broke it down with the word debar and amar. Words and sayings. But again, we'll look at this. If anyone has any questions or have any comments, we'll take them and then we'll go ahead and end. Hallelujah. Are you aware of the hidden spells of the English language? Why do our words even matter? You see, words are powerful spells that can literally change your reality. In this video, I'm going to shine a light on what you're really speaking into existence through etymology. What is etymology? 
Etymology is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history, or his story. The English language has many hidden and secret spells in which you can use to empower or disempower yourself with. One of the first things they teach us at school is how to read and write. In order for us to be able to read and write, we have to learn skills such as spelling and grammar. Grammar is based off the old French word grimoire, which means magic book of spells. The alphabet is just symbols put in different sequences that create spells. When creating sentences, you are sentencing someone to your spell. A sentence is to give someone a term. With every word you speak, you are literally casting a spell. A curse of cursive serving like a prison term. It takes real eyes to realise the real lies of how our words can be as deadly as swords. So if you want to know what a word truly means, look below its surface, dissect it, and look at it from many different angles. Words can be viewed forwards, backwards, phonetically, etymologically, with numerology, and split to arrange different anagrams. All languages are a single confused babble mixing different grammatical and phonetic fractals. In other words, words are vibrations. Words have power. Words can change your reality. Words can make or break you. That's why they say that even though your tongue has no bones, it is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with the words you speak to yourself and others. Understanding etymology and word spells can help you to spell without cursing yourself and others. Notice how I said understand and not understand. To understand means to stand under one's authority. No one stands above or below you, me or anyone. To understand is to stand from within. You see, the basic tool for manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. If you can control the meaning of the words, you can control the people who must use the words. To give you an example, when you are purchasing a property, you have to sign a contract with your lawyer. Even though the terms and conditions are written in English, it can seem like gibberish to most. This is because it is written in legalese format to confuse those that are signing the contract. It's all just a manipulation on linguistics and that is the con. A con is to deceive someone by lying or tricking them into believing something. The word mortgage is derived from the old French word which means death pledge. That's why it takes you approximately 30 years to pay it off. About the same amount of time for someone that has been sentenced to life imprisonment. And I wonder why so many people call this world we live in the Matrix, or Mars Tricks, the Mother's Tricks. In order for the trick to be played, one must tune into their television, tells lies to your vision. That's why it's called a television program, because your subconscious mind is being programmed. The question is, what sort of information is your mind being programmed with? So for most people that want to stay informed with the latest news, they tune into their favourite news channel and watch the latest broadcast of those casting abroad to cast their spells. To channel is to tune into a certain frequency and channel their favourite programmes. To make channeling easier, they created the remote control. 
so they could control you remotely. In Hollywood, they call it movie magic. After watching your favorite programs or movies, you have the option to see the movie cast. If we look at the term Hollywood, it actually derives from the holly tree. The holly tree was used by druids who were known for being priests, witches, and also wizards who used its branches to craft their magic wands for casting spells in ancient times. These rituals still go on today. Hollywood movies are forms of sorcery using psychology, subliminal messages, and manifestation through what is called lesser magic and bewitchment. Some even use the term law of attraction. That's why actors and actresses use scripts and movies as they speak things into existence. Even the news reporters are reading scripts as they broadcast their latest information from around the world or from your local government. They are all just actors and actresses playing their role in programming you, whether they are conscious of this knowledge or not. When we break down the word government, we get govern and mint. Mint is derived from the Latin word mente, which means mind. In other words, mind control. If you want to dive deeper into mind control, then I would suggest researching Project MKUltra, which was a CIA mind control program. You may also be thinking, this sounds like one big conspiracy. Although, that word was invented by the CIA as well, to try and confuse, ridicule and disqualify any alternative information that contradicted the main narrative or script. So uh, I don't want to play the rest of it. It's it's a little bit more lengthy. Uh, the guy kind of get into some other stuff, but with everything that he said, I agree with because of uh, things that we are told or we are brought up to say, we don't really understand the effect or the impact that it has on us. Even with entertainment, enter means to go in, Tain means to grab hold of, and meant is the condition, to hold you in that condition. But we think it's just entertainment, right? So again, um, whenever Abba places something on my heart, um, I made a promise that I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any questions? Any questions or any comments? And can I get a couple people to pass out the, uh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Um, yeah, get it from, uh, you can get it from DS. It's, it's a little bit longer. And again, just as a, um, as a disclaimer, he started getting into a, a little weird stuff of saying, like, you own your own destiny and all this other crazy talk. But um, that portion that we played, I agree with. Um, and scripture agrees with it as well. That's why it continues to tell us, watch our words. Be mindful of what we're saying. Um, Maurice Sanquilla? Well... Many know that I push etymology a lot, and most people, it turns them off, something serious. Um, the word nice is, is a word that people use towards me often when they see things that I make or whatever, and I, I used to reject it, but now I just put the little care thing or whatever because I try to share with people the etymology of nice and where it comes from. See, the goddess of victory or the god of victory, either or. Nike is the god goddess, but Hermes and Nike, both, uh, they, they both gods of victory. That word in itself 
the origin comes from that region, Nice or Nice or whatever. And, and you know, you can see Nicosia and all these different things that have that in the beginning. Nike, you know, the, the shoes and everything. But that God would use deception and basically make you stupid or, or, or that word meant you were stupid or, or ignorant. And so when you're saying it, it's not really a compliment, but now we see it in our vernacular as a compliment. But it's actually kind of calling you slow and, you know, able to be deceived. And so we push that nice, 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 nice. And most people say it all the time and not realize you're saying a deity's name, one, and then also you're actually insulting the person. You're, you're speaking negatively towards them, but yet it, it seems to be a kindness. Yep. That's why it's so important for us to learn uh, not only the origin, but to get back to the Hebraic, our Hebraic roots when it comes to words. I told off for sharing too. Uh, it was two other people, I think. Oh, I just wanted to know where you got the link from. I think you said you was going to put it in WhatsApp or something. Huh? Yeah, we have DS. DS okay. can, yeah, he can that's, that's share. All I, that's all I wanted to know. Any other, any other questions or comments? I have a question. What technically has more power, the words or the belief behind the words? But I'm just going to give you my opinion. Okay. Your words are your manifested thoughts, mm -hmm. and your actions are your manifested words. So I believe it's the thought behind it. But if you try to change your way of thinking, your words are going to follow, and your actions should follow. Okay, so the second half of my question is, with the etymology of words and how we're, like Shanquilla just mentioned, we're saying words that technically mean one thing, but from our understanding and from what our belief is of what a word means, what is giving more power to, what is manifesting from the words that we're saying? Is it going to be the origin of that word, or is it going to be the belief of what we understand that word to be? I think it's the origin. Because how do, how do you keep somebody deceived? You can have them thinking that they're saying one thing, right, right. but they're really saying another thing. So when we're saying that we're manifesting something, um, it would be difficult to use the example of nice. But do you see what I'm saying as far as if someone is constantly, they, they're thinking they're doing something quote unquote nice and they're always complimenting someone. I can't use it as an example of manifesting something, but if you're using, you know what I'm saying, like if you're using a certain word to manifest something, but it has an origin of something completely different, but someone sees the manifestation of that thing come to pass, is it really that they manifested something out of the, the original intent of that word or what they knew that thing to be, whether it's a word or whatever it may be? So I... I look at it like this. Remember in the scripture it say, Yah winked at our ignorance. So if you're ignorant of something, you don't even know what you're actually doing or what you're saying. But the minute that you have knowledge, and what is our knowledge again? Torah. Torah. So the minute that you have Torah or you have knowledge, now you have to operate in that knowledge. And this is just me. Wisdom is operating in knowledge. Because you can know something, but so what? I can know how to get from here to my house, but if I don't actually put it into action, I'm not going to get from here to my home. That's wisdom when you actually operate in the knowledge that you have. One of the things is the person that's using it doesn't realize that we're in a legal system. That's the problem. You're using it, and if you're understanding, standing under the authority over here and you don't know, you get the benefits in the end of that. But when you stand or sit or understand with Yah, you're supposed to eventually come to the place that you know better, that you do better. And so your ignorance, you're still in that system. 
So, so of course, you getting, you know, or doing and getting the results of that system is, is, is kind of obvious. But when you come to knowledge and, uh, you know, comprehension, you should come up out of it. And so we should be constantly seeing that this is not our language. Thus, we don't know the tricks of it. We don't know who's listening, who's observing, and who's, you know, basically paying attention to how we move. When they see we say certain things, they know that we're still subject and we're still bound or binding. We're, you know, we've signed a contract. But until we come to a, some more comprehension on certain things, then we can pull ourselves out. Because I even say certain things or do certain things, and, but I have awareness on this. But do I have awareness on that? And as we grow, we should eventually pull away from that system altogether. But until we know which intimacy is in knowing, you know, even with that word, no, we know that means intimacy. The, the, the system tells us no just means we programmed you, but we know it means intimacy. So, yeah. That's, that's like this, and this, I'm not trying to get all deep, but that's just like a court when you go to the court of law. The court is somewhere where you play a game at. And law, again, so if, if you go to a court of law, it's a matter of who knows how to play that game of those words and who know it less. So the first thing that they ask you, go, go look at anything. They're going to ask you, what's your name? You'll give them your name. They're going to read whatever charges. And then they're going to ask you, do you understand? And after you tell them yes, now they can proceed to whatever is going to happen after that. Because you submitted. Yes, I was on. I think we need to be real careful how we repurpose things from its original intent. We are in the land of our oppressors, and we're entering into a season, the holiday season, where it's the same thing they're doing with something that's an abomination to our, our father. They want to repurpose it, repackage it, and say, this is what it means to us. But what it means to us is still an abomination to the most high. So I think we need to be extremely careful how we repackage and repurpose something that was an abomination to try to package it up and present it as something that should be acceptable. Luke 6, 45, it, there's, there should be no divide between what's in your heart and what comes out of your mouth. And I emphasize should, because you should know what's in your heart. So Luke 6.45, it says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth which is good. A evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So before it comes out of your mouth, it grew roots in your heart. And I yoke. Yep, and that, that go right back to saying, you know, a man buys fruit, by the fruit that it bears. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Yamar and then Daryl. There you go. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to add real quick, too, that uh, a lot of times when we speak, uh, we don't know, we, we are very, very unaware of how powerful our words could actually be. Um, and I think that comes from being in multiple levels of being sleep, uh, being, um, believing in the programming that we already have been in, of that we only have so many power, or I didn't mean to, it don't really mean that much. But uh, there's a guy by the name of Robert Emoto. He's a Japanese scientist. And he did some work, I believe it was called the Water Project, where he was writing words on a jar of rice. And the cooked rice was somewhere around 90% water. And whatever he wrote on that jar 
the rice morphed into the word that he had labeled on that jar. Uh, there's other times where you can speak to water and watch it, uh, have it freeze and look at it under a microscope and you can see what love looked like. So if you say, oh, I love you, you can watch that water take the form of that word, look at it under a microscope and you will see a beautiful crystallized structure. But then you can also see a way you will say something like, that makes me sick, and the water will also take on that vibration, and you will look under that uh, molecule, and it will have a grotesque stru uh, structure. So, you know, it, it, it's a lot more to it than just the origin of the word, uh, what it was meant to be. But I do believe that as we continue to grow our conscious awareness of the words we use, the way in which we use them, and the power of it, that we're going to get closer and closer to our final form, which is um, being the sons and daughters of the living Elohim. And now you. Toda. Hey, one, one last thing. When, it, when I talked about that court thing, I had a, a friend... Um, or he was a coworker that went to court. And after he was sentenced, the judge and his lawyer said, it isn't our fault that you don't know the law. That you don't know what you, what you should know, what you need to know, or what you're saying. So again, Torah is our teacher. And I, I don't want that to sound cliche, but Torah is our teacher, and the Ruach is supposed to help bring in, um, like, an understanding of that teacher, of what we, that's why when you say, in all you're getting, get an understanding. That's why we're supposed to continue to rehearse so that we put it in our thought process, and now, uh, I'm not saying bless you, I'm saying barakata, Right? Or I'm not saying, um, whatever, I love you, I'm saying ahabata, or whatever, or good morning, as opposed to grand rising, or something, right? So we just got to be conscious of what we're saying. What is, what is the law of warfare? You got to tell a person what you're going to do to them before you actually do it. But what did it start with? Saying. Most, it's, Torah say don't suffer or witch to live, period. period. Notice that a witch, thoughts, actions, and words all matched. Remember, remember when Vanita was doing her dance. Words, thoughts, and actions should match. Or they do whether we want to admit to it or not. Shalom, shalom. Uh, praise Most High Yah for that message. Um, I like what Michi said, Shanquilla, Andrew, Yamira, everybody. I mean, we all in the process. And the bottom line, the gist of the whole matter is we trying to get back to the authentic autograph. That's why as Israelites, Hebrews, we want to go back to the beginning. Um, you know, when we came into Christianity, they bring us three-fourths and a half into the book. Um, uh, when you talk about the holidays, they believe, well, they did it back then. We're doing it this way. But you got to go back, like you said, to the origins, what it meant from the beginning. And um, that's, you know, that's the process that we all should go through. You know, we're learning each day by day. And once we come to that knowledge of the truth, then we should operate in it. So I'm just basically just co-signing what everybody said. I thought that was profound. And I appreciate this message on today. Toda. All right, if that is it for the, uh, thank you, sir. If that's it for the uh, questions or comments, again, we got to be out of here at 3 o'clock. Uh, so we do want everyone to stay behind, fellowship, enjoy some food. Uh, and also, uh, we kind of switch things around. We do not do Taruma right after worship. Um, just the origins of that. We don't want to play off anybody's emotions, uh, but we want to stick to the script. Scripture says, as it move your heart, give. Uh, so for those that do want to contribute and give uh, to Ruma, you can do so. Just raise your hand. Um, Maisha, she will give you an envelope or someone will pass you an envelope. 
a couple of different ways of giving. Um, cash, still good for right now. Um, <laughs> um, cash app, which is a dollar sign, Great Awake Detroit. Again, dollar sign, Great Awake Detroit. When you punch it in for the cash app, if you do not make sure it's dollar sign, Great Awake Detroit, we may not get it. All right? And then also via PayPal, which is paypal.me forward slash Great Awakening 400. Um, if I can have Maury LaRue to close us out. Yes, sir. Yep. Hallelujah. Abba Yahuwah, we thank you for your word that went forth on today. Hallelujah. The power of words. I just pray that the words that went forth will germinate in our hearts and produce that what it's meant to produce in our lives. Hallelujah. I thank that. Thank you, Abba, that we'll be more mindful of the words we speak, the thoughts we think. Hallelujah, which dictates our action. Hallelujah. I thank you that we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Hallelujah. And once we come to realize and get knowledge of a certain thing that we'll act accordingly, we'll do as we know better, we'll do better, Abba. So we just say thank you, Toto Rabbah, for your word that went forth on today. We thank you for this Shabbat, this fellowship, and we bless, we barak the food that we are about to partake of, that it may be strengthening and nourishing to our physical bodies. So we just say Toto Rabbah, Abba, and we give you all praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah.